I'm gonna go ahead and guess that this show ruined people's lives by making houses that were so crazy expensive and having the like the family needing to pay taxes on it and them not being able to afford it. Either that, or maybe they destroyed families by like, you know, the cast sleeping with the wife or the husband or whatever while they're waiting for their house to be built. You know, just like home wrecking. But I don't know. Patrick's about to tell us. But I always wonder that too because, I mean, yeah, you get something way more expensive, but you also have to pay for that expensive ass house. You know, like if you get, if you get a mate or if you get like a really big house, if you don't want it to get all dusty and dirty, you're gonna need someone to clean it, unless you're gonna be cleaning it all the time. And water bill is gonna go up, electricity bill is gonna go up because of the, the AC. You know. Like, I don't know. There's a lot that goes into it. And then, yeah, the property taxes, probably. Since you can't technically fucking own anything in America. I don't even understand. And anywhere, actually. Like, why you? Why, why can you buy land? Why can you buy land and buy, like, pay for everything to be installed and shit? But, yeah, you still got to be paying uh, taxes. I mean, to be fair. Like, what if you live, like, I think even if you live off the grid, right? Like, if, if you were to make your own source of energy like your own windmill and your own water system inside your house and maybe like made your own wi-fi somehow i don't even know how but maybe you made your own wi-fi tower that connects to fucking well no because they'd be like well you're connecting to our internet how do you create internet what is the internet how do you how do you grab onto that and send these send these videos through it is it just a big cloud if you were to, if you were to third party tap into that internet, is that illegal? What would that be? I don't know. Let's see how they ruin families though. Imagine one morning you wake up to this guy screaming outside of your house into a megaphone. Good morning, you walk outside so to find and so out family. That he is with a television crew, and they are sending you and your family on a one week vacation. Should I fight these and fools? During that time, he is going to demolish your home and build you a brand new yeah, one you from don't. the ground up. Although it's pretty obnoxious, it sounds like a pretty good deal, right? Well, it is a good deal until it's not. Foreclosures, angry community yep. members, property tax increases, bills doubling to tripling, and even more family Damn. struggles. Many of the families that were featured on All Extreme the Makeover Home Edition ended up worse off than before Ty Pennington showed up on their doorstep. But to fully understand how some Did he actually just go up to like random houses and was like, yo, that house is ass, bro. I bet they would let us do it. And then we're just being like, yeah, dude, I'll let you destroy my house and rebuild it. You look, uh, you look trustworthy. You got a gray spiky hair and the, and the soul patch. You got the soul patch, bro. You can never hurt me. Families were negatively affected by what seems to be a very generous gift. We must first take a look at the families that were carefully chosen to get these home remodels. Typically, individuals would fill out an application form on the ABC website, which required them to provide a story of why they deserved a new house. You could also nominate another family, such as a friend or a member of your community. I wonder if I could throw this at somebody. Every episode starts with a story of the deserving Oh, he didn't have gray hair. I don't know why I said that. Such as a family the that lost their thing. mother or father, a family with a disabled child, a family that's living in poverty, or a family affected Bro. by a natural disaster. Wait, he really found these people and fucked them over even harder? He didn't, like, pay for their shit and pay for their... That didn't work. I bet I could fight them, though. Because that there was a dude in here, that guy right there, I flattened his ass. This guy right here was playing basketball. And I just spawned in, and I didn't know if there was friendly fire, so I just started beating his ass, and he died. In, like, three punches. I bet I could kill all of these guys. But I don't really want to, you know? They seem chill. This dude asked me for some salt. I might have to kill him. Okay, so I don't have to kill them. Man, I wish I didn't kill the dude in there. I feel like a dickhead. Oh, shit. I didn't mean to kill you in one punch. And you? How come he's the only one that survived, bro? Whoops. I'm gonna be an asshole. Master. Since this was a reality television they call show, me it was very important to That's produce what they said the his most name is tired episodes possible, featuring stories that would deeply tug at the viewers' heartstrings. Some people argued that specifically targeting families who had endured unimaginable tragedy and faced overwhelming hardship Poor was families. ABC exploiting them for better ratings. 
Joe Scarborough of MSNBC claimed that Extreme Makeover has a secret wish list of victims the show is trying to hunt down. They want to find a family who has multiple children with Down syndrome. They want to find a child with a rare condition that causes rapid aging and death. They want to find an extraordinary mom or dad who's- What the fuck? What a strange, like, uh... Specific kind of family you want to target, you know? Like you're really scouting people out. Like, what do you like? What do you search up on Facebook? Disable or fucking uh, rapid aging diseases or families with that shit. Find the find the people and then go like look up their address and shit. That's really really strange, bro. That is so weird. And then I'm sure they know that they're fucking these families over at least maybe the first or second time. You know, maybe the first time they didn't know. Or I'm sure they knew though because people. Like, you don't just make a show like that and have the money for that kind of crew without one person in there being like, you know, this is going to raise their, their fucking taxes and their bills and all that, right? Like, I'm sure somebody in there would have said something. But they knowingly ruin people's lives, possibly diagnosed with Lou Gehrig's disease. Now, if the show was aggressively targeting these people, sure, that's a bit weird, especially because it's likely for the TV ratings and not for charity. However, it is still a good deal. I got the highlights Plus, in my hair, bro. You can trust me. Families or ones that seemed like and they the weren't that necklace. bad off, they would be criticized for not focusing on a more deserving family. I don't think Home Makeover is taking advantage of the families. However, I do think that monthly subscription sites take advantage of you and know that most people forget to cancel their subscriptions. Well, today's sponsor, Rocket Money, is here to help. Oh, shit. Rocket Money is an all-in-one finance platform that helps you save more and spend less. This personal finance app allows you to manage subscriptions, lower bills, build a custom budget, and grow your savings oh, all shit. in one place. I'm using Rocket Money to clean up all those unnecessary monthly subscriptions I forgot I was paying for. And they make it super easy, oh. canceling them for you with just one tap. I like to use it to monitor my spending. Rocket Money allows you to set budgets by category and will notify you if you exceed them. They will even negotiate easy. your bills for you. Just find the provider you use, upload a photo of your bill, and let them do the rest. To save more and spend less, join the 3.4 million users using Rocket Money. Dude. I've got the hookup. Go to rocketmoney.com slash patrickcc or- I'm not gonna lie, I've been kind of- or not been kind of, but the last time I saw someone do a Rocket Money one, I think it was uh, Theo Vaughn. I was kind of like, what's up, bitch? Oh. Wait, what did it say? Grab what? His weapon? Bitch. Oh, yeah. Look at you. Get kicked. How do I, how do I Sparta kick him? Shit. Fuck you. Give me that blasted boy. Oh, I could have pressed... When an enemy's balance reaches what? Oops. Oh, I can't kick him with it. Bitch, get the fuck out of the way. I don't think you can kick him off the map. Oh, but anyway, yeah, I don't know. Rocket Money kind of, whenever Theo Vaughn said it, it kind of did make sense. It was like, uh, I mean, think about all the money in like a, a streaming ser service that you don't even use. Like, say you have Crunchyroll or say you have like Hulu, but you've been watching a lot of Netflix or you've been watching a lot of YouTube. You know, you could easily go there and just like shut that bill off real quick instead of calling them and going through the, the whole process of canceling everything. But I don't know how, I don't know. I'd have to get it. I have to try it out. I'm willing to try it though. Kinda, I guess. Not really. I think I'd rather just, because if you got to pay for a subscription for them, I'd rather just call them and go through that fucking hassle myself. Or click the link in the description to get started for free. Or unlock even more features with premium. That's rocketmoney.com slash patrickcc to get started for free. Get your money Bitch. right. Once the participants were selected, the crew would treat the families to a fully funded vacation to destinations such as Hawaii, California, or Florida. During the family's trip, ABC would rally hundreds of contractors, construction workers, and volunteers in the local community to help. Sometimes they would even make Facebook pages so all their neighbors could stay up to date. Oftentimes, the volunteers are critical for the house getting completed on time. Then, tied
Ty Pennington would video call the family and show his crew absolutely destroying their house, and sometimes they would take it too far. Take the Rapati Pierce family, for example. The mother and father were both police officers, and one tragic night, Christina was shot during a foot pursuit, which led to her being paralyzed from the waist down. So they hired the Damn. LA SWAT team to place bombs inside of the house, detonate them, then drive a massive battering ram attached to an armored truck to destroy the house. Now, obviously, they have to do demolition to rebuild a new house from the ground all up. Dramatic. It would still be a bit Just drop a to bomb on it. Why not? With all those memories, get smashed to a million pieces. But the That's ridiculousness true, didn't stop there. Remember, this is reality TV. It's true, honestly. Sometimes I'd be missing my apartments. Imagine your own home, especially if it was like paid off and shit. You know. All right, hold up. These motherfuckers. Oh, I got it. Fuck you. Oh, easy. This is too easy. Just building a very practical, standard, and modest home wouldn't be good enough. So the carpenters and designers were pushed crazy. to create increasingly elaborate designs and gimmicks Bro. to boost ratings, <sighs> such as this airplane-themed bedroom. Yo, actually, I wonder, well, obviously not because it ruined their families. I was going to say, I wonder if they, if the family like didn't have to pay for this, they only have to pay for shit afterwards. I wonder if they could literally just get their house flipped like this, sell everything that's inside, and then fucking sell the house. Or even rent the house out, you know? I don't know how that would work. I don't think, I'm pretty sure that's a no-go though if it ruined their families, you know? Room with bags of peanuts as curtains. This very small backyard bags that was peanuts converted as to a miniature go-kart track. Why? How many trips Aren't you gonna eat them all and then track it's gonna be see-through? able to do before they get absolutely sick of it? Why not a playroom with a ball pit containing 27,000 plastic balls? And my personal favorite, a teenager's room entirely made out of duct tape. Desk. I have a bedspread and a pillowcase. May I auto duct tape? The designers would take one small facet of their personality and dedicate the entire bedroom to it. Like this toddler who said he wants to be a cardiologist when he grows up. So they put EKG signals on the walls and a dresser designed to look like a human heart. Rooms like this seem very difficult to age in, and the tacky designs would actually take a considerable amount of effort to change. But sometimes it wasn't just tasteless designs. They would actually create new responsibilities that the family may not have even wanted. For example, this teenager got a jacuzzi that took up half the bedroom. Could you imagine your Damn, room constantly son. smelling like hot chlorine water? The cost to maintain a jacuzzi is only about $20 to $40 per month in sanitizer and chemicals, but even doing the maintenance is a burden that maybe nobody wanted. Just draining that water every three to four months like you're supposed to would be incredibly inconvenient. Another thing they Especially did often in the middle was of your room. What if it leaks? or animal habitats, like this boy's room that looks like the reptile section at a pet store. I'd be fucking frogs, scared they're going to get out. Lizards. Buying pet They're food, eating supplies, my ears and while I sleep. the tanks is even more important because it will literally kill oh, yeah, the animal true. if you don't. Extreme home makeover inserting new responsibility onto you without your choice isn't only annoying. For some people, it created even more problems and it's financial nice stress that uh, ultimately forced them to move out of their homes. Now, most of the time, ABC would entirely nice crib, pay though. off the home for the family. Okay. However, owning a home is more than just paying the mortgage. Expenses such as property taxes, utilities, and home maintenance add up extremely quickly. There have been multiple Literally reports said of all families whose expenses doubled, if not tripled, within the first year of living there. The Dickinson family went from an 1,800 square foot ranch to a six bedroom, four bathroom, 4,000 square Damn. foot super home equipped with cutting edge technology. Technology, so it's only natural to assume that the bills would go up. Their electric bill alone went from about $200 per month to as high as $600 after. Their property Damn. taxes tripled. The wife, India, said Just she keep wasn't it worried. The same temperature. My husband works and I work, so if I have to work another job to help keep it up, that's what I'll do. But as the no. years went on... See, that's what's... It's already paid off. What are you working two, two jobs just to maintain your living? Like The whole point of owning your house is that you're done paying rent and you, you, all that money you were spending to have somewhere to live, now you're spending a significant amount less just paying property taxes as opposed to property tax plus whatever you're paying for your house. You know, it's like a car. Like you're paying, you're paying till your car is paid off, and then once it's paid off, you don't got to pay that thing anymore. You just got to pay for gas and maintenance, which is not going to be the same amount you're paying for your car, obviously. So I mean, if you already have your house paid off, but you're working two jobs. To barely make enough to even just stay there after it's been paid for? Fuck. 
that and it got worse and worse and in october of 2016 no retirement. william filed a chapter 13 bankruptcy petition to save his home from foreclosure he had only five dollars in cash 287 dollars in a checking account and 15 dollars in a joint savings account at the time of filing However, it seems like they never lost the house, because on 2022 Google Maps, you can see William and his daughter standing outside the front door, proud of their estate. But that situation was nothing compared to the Oakvath family. The Oakvaths were from Gilbert, Arizona, and their story began with a heartfelt letter from their daughter, Cassandra, who requested the show to renovate the cancer ward where she had been a patient. Touched by Cassandra's selfless request, the producers not only granted her wish, but also surprised the family of nine with a two-story mansion. Damn, look the at construction that place. involved a massive team of 1,600 contractors and volunteers that garnered attention from across the state. Unfortunately, this wasn't happily ever after. Utility they should just move in more of their family. <laughs> Be like, yo, cousin Larry, need a place to stay, dog. As long as you pay bills, bro, help us pay the rent. You're good to go, son. The cost reached twelve hundred dollars for electricity per month and four hundred dollars per month for water. Oh, Property you fuckers. taxes increased from sixteen hundred pre makeover to fifty six hundred wow. after Brian lost his job and was battling depression. With no other immediate solution, uh, they used their house as collateral to take out a $405,000 loan. Why loan though? Why not just sell the house? Why would you not? Like if they paid it off for you, right? Can't you just sell the house and find something way cheaper? It was an adjustable rate mortgage and the payments became too much for the family to handle. This was their oh, they, so they didn't even get it paid off. The bank didn't even pay that. Oh, because he did say sometimes the bank would pay them off. Or that uh, the or the, the crew. I forgot who he said pays. Sometimes they paid it paid for it. But I guess not all the times. Damn, dude! Imagine them tearing down your fan. Or they are like, yeah, you want us to do this? Yeah, but you're gonna have to pay for it all. Oh, okay, then no. <laughs> That's what I would have said. What the fuck? Dream home, and they knew they couldn't afford it. Craziest part is, they never even asked for this in the first place. The ironic part about these situations is that people's first instinct is to doubt the families. Why couldn't they figure it out? Why not get another job? Why didn't they just sell the house? Most of the time, That's what nobody I just wants said. to buy these homes. The Oakvaths oh, listed they're their too house expensive. for $1.8 million, then slowly started to lower the price over the next year. Oh, you think that's what they do? Maybe it's, maybe it's a whole scam. They... They basically list it for way more than it's even worth, right? That way, yeah, if the family tries to sell it, they're not gonna get they're not gonna get the money. And then wait, wait a second. Oh no, because they don't own it. I was about to say again, why don't they just take a big L as long as they're selling it? But again, they have to pay the fucking thing off first. But I was gonna say maybe they like make it like they list it for so high that way they can't sell it sell it. And then they file for bankruptcy or whatever. They get kicked out of the house. And, you know, the bank gets to seize the house and get it, take it back. And then basically they, then they drop the price so they can kind of make a, a big fucking profit just by kicking someone out of their house. What's the, what's the benefit of, of that? Why not just build that house somewhere else? Year. Out of desperation, they ended up selling for 540 k just enough to break even on their loan and maybe put a down payment on a new place. The so Beach family can, have been trying to sell their home since February 2013. The price tag the started price. at 700000 and is now down to 535000 They say they've had to sell because the upkeep of the house is just too much now. It's a That's unique home up, and will take a unique person to buy it. Most critics forget the reason these families got these homes were because they were struggling in the first place. Many of them had pre-existing debt. Some of them weren't even homeowners in the first place. They were renting the house and ABC bought it and built them a new one. Combine these money issues with the family trauma they were all experiencing and it's a recipe for disaster. From my research, every single family that sold their house sold it for less than what it cost to build. But no matter what reason they chose to sell their house, they faced backlash from the community. Since each home is a community project with hundreds of volunteers, they look at the home like a gift from their neighbors. The Hassel family decided to sell just three years later because it was too much stress to handle. Then a publication interviewed members of the community to see how they feel. A lot of people gave time, product, and services. Some are very angry. Some I've run into have asked, why do they deserve it? Mm. There was even a letter written to the local newspaper that titled, The entire Hassel family story is a disgrace and humiliation to this community. 
The Harper family's house foreclosed, and the mayor's response was, it's aggravating. It just makes you mad. You do that much work, and they just squander it. Because he helped vault a massive beam into place in the Harper's living room. The Nicholas family received a home after the father died from contracting hepatitis Damn. C when he was pricked with a patient's contaminated needle. Nine years oh, later, the home dude, was foreclosed. That's, that sucks, man. That fucking blows, bro. Imagine doing your job, like helping someone out. I mean, imagine being the patient too, right? It's kind of like, damn, dude, I just fucking gave that dude Hep C, just because I like, just because I got it. I wonder how that patient got it. They might have done something too, like that. They might have just accidentally, you know, pricked themselves with someone else's shit. Damn, bro, what a terrible way to go. Poor guy. Poor family. Because the mother could not manage the previous home mortgage and new property taxes that tripled in price. I feel bad because so many people came together to help us, she said. I know I shouldn't feel like I let them down, but I do. Oh, many of the families feel guilt and shame that they couldn't live happily ever after. Most of them don't want to sell their houses, but the financial stress and family tragedy is overbearing. As the years went on, ABC scaled back their projects because so many homes were being foreclosed on. They eventually oh, realized shit. these over-the-top charity acts were too extreme to be truly helpful, but then their ratings dropped since the homes weren't extreme enough for TV, which led to the show being cancelled in 2012. I also noticed there? that they only crazy. have a small selection of episodes available on Hulu today, and all of the families who went on to sell or get foreclosed on got their episodes removed from streaming services. It turns out, when you find a broken family facing hardship and financial problems, build them an extremely oversized home with ugly interiors in the middle of a neighborhood surrounded by other homes not even worth half as much as the new one they just built, it ends up doing more harm than good. Damn, and Ty was eating good after all that shit. He was just like, yup, I built that house. Oh, the family? Yeah, I don't know where they went. What the fuck, bro? I mean, and it's like, they literally had to have known that they were fucking these people over, right? They had to have known. Like I said, they had to have had at least one person in their entire crew that was like, bro, property tax alone is going to fuck these people. And I wonder if they even tell these people, like, you know, a lot of this stuff is going to go up. Are you sure you want us to do it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it would be cool. And I wonder if they even give the family any kind of uh, compensation for being part of the show. Like any percentage of it or whatever. Or if they just get recorded for free. I don't know. That's fucked up, man. I wonder how... Uh, I wonder how many completely they fucked over like that because... I'm sure there was more. There was probably some that didn't get aired, you know? I don't know. It, it fucks me over, though, because... Or not fucks me over, but if... I just... I, I have a feeling that they had to have known. They had to have known that they were destroying these people's lives and they still did it. And they still targeted... Hopeless people, or not hopeless, but, you know, like, people in bad spots, you know? What a, what a shitty thing to do, bro.